Okay, so before um, we start talking about uh, any kind of like res like you know kind of patterns or findings that we see with uh, body worn cameras, we need to understand you know a few complexities that are added surrounding it, right? Because if this is you know sort of a policy reform, right? You know this is something that we want to do, right? We know that any kind of policy, right, requires a change. Delta is how I'm representing this, right? So in order to get to this change right, you know, there more often than not is going to require money, and that's the first part, right? But also, uh, you know, changes in procedures and documentation. There's, you know, gonna be some wide array of committee work that has to be done to decide on the policy, what it's going to be. Um, there is this communication phase, right? Or whatever change in policy is announced, right? You know, and, and maybe they're soliciting feedback during this process. Maybe they're not. You know, there's a lot of things that can go on. Um, the actual training involved with the new policy, and then outside of all of that, right? One, once you have all this like stuff comes in, right? You know, then there's the actual implementation, and which this part may seem. Um, maybe like a little confusing, right? But it has to be, you know, obeyed, right? Or there has to be compliance with the new policy. So keep in mind, right? Like these are all underlying, you know, components and committees, right? And like on paper, the scene or I guess screen, whatever, you know, this is a, you know, somewhat easy thing to digest, right? Like we can accept it, right? But let's, let's start getting into some of the nuance associated with uh, body-worn cameras, right? So we'll call this uh, complexities or something like that. Right, so if we have these kinds of complexities that are coming out, right, and the first part is going to be, you know, writing things on the policy. And related to that, if we start thinking about, you know, things that, you know, have to be in, right, there's going to be, you know, represented to be for best practices, right? And some, sometimes those change over time, right? So when we think about that, what's involved with that, right, you know, there are issues related to time. Um, time in what way, right? So this can be things, you know, that are, so if these two are related, right, there's also this issue of, like, when to turn on. So do you turn it on your entire shift? Do you turn it on as soon as a stop is incurred? Do you turn it on when use of force is being done or a search is about to be done? You know, when does this actually, um, you know, happen, right? There's also about when to turn off, right? Because do you stop recording then? And what happens when you stop recording? Who vouches for it? Does someone have to, uh, if you're vouching for it, right? Like. Does someone have to like witness you doing it right? So is there, what kind of policies and procedures are put into place to observe and you kind of keep watching, right? So it's really a big thing, right? Now, if we have these issues, right, you know, so we kind of talked about it a little bit, but it's, there's also the decision of what to record. So, you know, like, as we already said, you know, is it just each stop? Is it each encounter? How long? Is it just when force is being used? You know, like, what exactly happens in, right? So, you know, it could be, you know, highly situational because of that. Outside of that, too, we also find that if there's this decision on what to record and, like, how to record it and stuff like that, too, um, then there is this issue of storage, how long do we keep footage, right? Because now, it, since we're a government agency and we're producing public records, right, this has to be stored and kept somewhere for some period of time in case someone wants to see it and then set a, uh, you know, a disposal rate or a disposal date. And for this kind of thing, right, it's it could be incredibly expensive, right? So I'll, get, I'll give you an example. Like I have the Dropbox, uh, you know, like premium, like, I have, a, I have a premium Dropbox account, right? It's like one terabyte of cloud storage. And, you know, I keep it for all my photos. I keep it all for my, um, all my data that I have for various research studies and, like, other parts of my life, right? 
And, you know, and, and all the videos and stuff that I make for this course, right? And over time, you know, saving them locally, it gets really expensive, or it can take up a lot of space, right? Especially if I'm recording in 4K or in HD or something like that, right? These ones on the screen are, are not as, uh, you know, like big, but, you know, I, I pay, you know, whatever, you know, I don't know, 120-ish dollars a year or something like that. Now, when you are now, that's one terabyte, right? Which is, you know, pretty, it seems like a lot, right? Now, when you are talking about recording video from, you know, officer term accounts from one day, right? Like that is a ton of money. And if you start multiplying that times the force, the entire size of the police force, and every time someone has to do that, and you're talking about keeping that on for years because you can't get rid of it, right? Well, those costs, um, you know, exponentially grow, right? It's, it is a huge cost burden uh, related to this just to keep it safe, right? So the storage and disposal problem as well. Then separately, right? Because if you have this information, it's supposed to be stored, stored and whatever. It also has to be processed. So, you know, issues about who can access it, who's going to be able to, you know, maintain this file database, who's going to scrub it for, you know, whatever stuff, right? Um, and this also has to be coordinated as well with, you know, prosecutors because they're, you know, they're going to be very interested in seeing this video. What would things from the, from the uh, officer side, you know, if a, if a defense attorney, um, you know, wants it or something like that, you know, they have it, they have to submit that and give that information out, right? So, you know, that is, you know, a big complexity associated with this is that for any effective policy, right? All this has to be laid out. At the same time, you know, and just in terms of getting the nuts and bolts of this kind of thing, you know, in place, right, about the rules of when, where, how, who to hire, how long we got to hire people in storage, how long we're going to keep it and stuff like that. And, you know, you also have to uh, get the money to do that. And that may come from, you know, petitioning city governments that may be maybe through a grant, but the grants are temporary. It's not a permanent um, source of funding usually. So are you going to raise, end up raising taxes for this kind of thing? Uh, are you not? Um, what else is going to get sacrificed in order to fund this kind of program? Because we've now decided that everyone should have these, right? And so, you know, it gets, you know, to be a very, you know, complicated mess, right? But, you know, outside of just, like, pol all this, like, organizational policy stuff, right, we also know that there are going to be officers who do not comply. They, you know, maybe they forgot to turn it on, and sometimes that can be an accident, right? They get caught up in the heat in the moment, right? They're not properly trained on it. Others may be willfully doing it uh, for one reason or another, or they're not following policy, or they fail to, to turn it off, or they turn it off early, right? You know, that's... What are you going to do when someone doesn't comply and test the limit of it, right? Because if there's no enforcement for it and there's nothing, no action that can happen, um, this creates a problem then, right? Because it shows that, you know, there is negligence in the sense of you're, no one is making sure, you know, people are following the rules on this, right? Also concerns about, you know, what can be used in a complaint proceeding, right? Because before these were submitted by paper, we're now giving... Um, you know, these issues about, um, you know, access to information, these in complaint, do we let complaints be known? Do we have to, like, mark, you know, ignore everything else? Do we only accept complaints if there's video evidence, right? Like, what happens in those situations, right? Um, you know, you, you sort of change, like, a standard of proof for people by making like this, because now if there is video, people want to see it, or some people don't. It depends on the context, right? Um, and so that is a whole dynamic that is also kind of weird. Outside of org organizational stuff, right? You know, there's also this issue of, you know, even though like we are in public and we are seen and we are put in places by officers, right? There's also privacy issues, right? Um, and now in an encounter where an officer may not have uh, maybe just handled things informally, there was no video record, there's no audio recording, with a new policy, there might be, right? And that could be potentially embarrassing or distressing for someone, right? Or someone who just kind of wants to be anonymous in the world. It, what's an example of that? You can imagine, right, like if you, if someone was in a domestic violence incident and an officer comes in uh, with a camera rolling, they're now seeing inside your home, 
you're now seeing, you know, uh, you know, evidence of someone's trauma, uh, you know, someone was drunk or not, you're seeing them on their worst possible day, and it's all recorded, right? And it can be used and pulled, and, you know, I guess theoretically, if it was leaked, right, it would create a kind of a mess for that person then be, you know, damaging to their personality, right? Um, and so, you know, it, other people also kind of relate to this as being sort of a big brother situation where we're now keeping eyes on the public all the time and we're losing, you know, a form of privacy that we used to have, right? Um, and so that's also... A different thing is like, you know, if we think about officers, should they have it on all day? So that way, if they're walking, are they just recording everything that's happening? You know, much like a CCTV camera, like, you know, downtown area district or something like that. Or like in Europe, where they have CCTV cameras everywhere, right? Where now, instead of putting them attached to buildings, right, where you can maybe duck around a corner, they're now placed on human bodies uh, everywhere, right? So that's a whole, you know, separate issue. Um, that could be considered as well, too. This is, you know, very similar to if you think about uh, facial recognition technology. Or also, um, so if you recognize someone right in the face and you identify someone that is flagged as a criminal or is wanted or something like that, right? You know, if you're able to now see that person, which that may be good for me, crime control perspective of what happens when that technology is wrong or what happens when we think about, um, you know, where the consequences of doing that. And is that society we want to live in where anyone can be recognized and identify who is or who is not. Um, you could make an argument, too, that, you know, let's say, for example, that um, you only looked at the technology got to a point where it was evolved enough where you could identify people based off a of known da databases uh, off of uh, you know driver's license right so everyone who has a driver's license or identity card that's registered with the government you know you can be identified you can find criminals you can find not right but if you start thinking about people who maybe aren't in the system right in some way right you know, that could potentially arguably lead to, um, you know, identifying people who are maybe are undocumented or, you know, have entered uh, illegally into the country, right? And so if that leads to, you know, like targeting of those groups, you know, is that the fair or right thing to do, um, especially in places that may be like sanctuary cities versus, or if you're a federal agent, is that something that you want to do, right? Do we always have to submit to facial recognition if we go into like a building or something like that? Point being is that there's a lot of nuance and there are a lot of questions that need to be asked about, is this the kind of world that we want to live in and fully support? As a side note, right, you could also make similar arguments for uh, license plate recognition technology. You know, like do we want people to recognize certain cars based off their plates? and justify them as getting stopped or getting ticketed or something like that, right? Um, I mean, like, the t toll roads always find me, and it's really annoying, right? But, like, do we want to live in, add that, you know, extra layer uh, within a police or, uh, you know, kind of social control aspect, right? So the point of this, right, is that, you know, when we think about what is going to be an effective policy, you know, we have to consider all these factors and, you know, ask ourselves really about, you know, what ends up happening, right, and how it can vary from uh, dis department to department before making any uh, wide sweeping uh, kind of recognition or uh, proclamations, right? And so keeping this in mind, right, you know, there is something to consider, right, is that, you know, depending on what you look at and how you measure it, right, you know, we have mixed findings, um, and a lot of these mixed findings to date are going to be due to things that we've already talked about, and it's going to be due to the money involved with processing and maintaining this kind of thing. It's going to be due to policy, so what was written at the uh, department level, it's going to be due to, um, you know, like officer compliance. So their ability to follow the policy, right? And this is an imperfect process, right? It's not really something that can uh, be happening, right? It's going to be also due to, you know, do you alert the citizen that um, about being on camera or do you just let it fly, right? 
And, you know, how does that sh shift and impact behavior, right? Which, you know, if it leads to a negative, then maybe that's a, like, or there's less of a bad behavior, then that's good, right? We, we usually don't want bad behavior. We want to be safer, right? But, you know, there are, there are changes based off of that as well. And, of course, all of it, too, is that, you know, depending on, also depends on complaint processes and use of force, right? Uh, in general, you know, when it's mixed, right, you know, there is maybe some positive evidence that use of force, um, or pause, see, that's not what I want, positive for use of force going down, and some positive for complaints going down. Now, what is, you know, yet to be determined, right, is that if this leads to, you know, like, a, an increase in perceived legitimacy, of the PD, so people feel better about their police department, are they more likely to trust them, do they alert them to more crimes, do they, you know, not feel as harassed, right? It's also unknown, right, is this leads to a uh, decrease in, like, a racial bias or, you know, profiling, which is, you know, another, you know, a way that this tool is meant to be, you know, uh, fixed or done, right? And, you know, the other part, too, to consider is that, you know, is this, uh, you know, actually an effective tool or is it just like an extra layer um, of BS, right, as some people might uh, argue, right? So is it just one more layer or one more attempt at reform that doesn't f fundamentally work, right? You know, if you talk to people who are advocates of defunding police uh, in that movement, um, you know, they would say, no, right, this doesn't work. Although, keep in mind, right, that only like 30, like a third-ish, I think, of uh, PDs have body-worn cameras, and not every officer has them, not everyone's going to wear them on every shift, and, you know, all, plus the whole host of issues that we've already discussed, right? So as you're reading through, you know, this kind of research, these are all important considerations to have. But they also provide a good breeding ground for a lot of new questions to be asked that can be researched uh, with the right design, right? So uh, hopefully this kind of helps illustrate some of the nuance associated with this and, you know, maybe it makes it more interesting. Uh, if not, uh, well, I'm sorry. I, I can't, it can't always be my best um, at being interesting, but...